Hello my friends, and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, game number 7 in Ace Attorney series. My name is The Flightless Bear, this is your Story Beast Gaming channel, and we're here on case number 2, the monstrous turnabout. Ready to cross-examine Filch. Let's do this. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. The Yokai is Jinxie. Ah, Ten Matara is really that little maid gal. Ain't no doubt about it. Hold it. Mr. Filch, you and Miss LaBelle mentioned something about a practice yesterday. Do you deny this so called lesson about what you were supposed to say in court? And now, you got it all wrong. Then, could you tell the court exactly what sort of lesson it was? Oh, uh, I only was, uh, it was, um, was it again? Yipes! I uh, know, I remember it back! You know, numbers is dead. He is completely under Black Bull's control, too. Well, anyway, that Tim Tyler was that little meat gale, so what's the difference? I mean, the Tim Tower I saw was just a little thing about her size. I take you got a good look at how tall the Tim Tower impersonator was. Hehehe, <laughs> you bitch. You got a habit of size of people that. I can even give you a premiere on how to pull it off. Only did the table match. I got a knack for figuring out where people's pockets are and how much money they have. I size them up real good before I relieve them of the values. You just submitted to me in a pickpocket right here in court. Uh, does the witness hold this, this tin mato into the foyer? Well, damn right I do. I bet the little runt had a big old stamp. I, I seen it when she came into the foyer. Hold it. Well, you're not going to brush it all off by claiming the part by short. Hey, <laughs> must have hit it on there, cause he ain't all that tall as you. That's great. Look at talking, but I've kind of stand on the boxes to testify. The fact that they zoomed out just to show that is hilarious. Anyway, Mr. Fulch, correct me if I'm wrong. But did you say that Timber Taro you saw had a staff? I crossed my heart and hoped to die. No, because it went a jingle and a jingle. And what do you suppose that staff came from? Well, where are the, uh, the staff, you say? Well, I, um, uh... I bet you she stole it from the Forbidden Chamber after stumbling on the crime scene. Hold it! I suppose you mean to say that Jixi Tema entered the Forbidden Chamber to get one. Well, I ain't never seen a staff like that in the manor. So it had to be the Forbidden Chamber. Oh, really? The stench of the bell is thick in the air today. Jixi entered the Forbidden Chamber after the incident. Then she took the staff and tried to cover up her actions by pretending to be Tema Taro. I guess that's what Filch is trying to say. Could Jixi have even entered the Forbidden Chamber if she wanted to? Well, there is one thing that I was wondering about. Why did that yokai have a staff in the first place? Yeah, well, I got my hunches about that. Ah, she was gonna use it to walk me on account of my fierce reputation. I just know it. Hold it. Wallop you? And why would this so-called yokai want to do that? Well, that little mean gal never did it like me. She always hide tails up when I came around or she sticks his weird papers on my noggin. She probably thinks of him as the dreaded Tanuki monster of Kibi Manor or something. We need to prove that Jixi is a Tin Matado. But I've no idea how we're going to do that. All we had to do is prove that it was impossible for Jixi to turn into Tin Mataro. And that might be easier than you think. Really? Now is our chance. Our chance to expose the real Tematara for all to see. Okay, so what do we hit him on? 
It's a little thing about her size. A big old staff. Stole it from the Forbidden Chamber. Just gonna use it to walk me. Um. The key that the mayor took from the killer and swallowed. There's only one of its kind. Objection! Oh yeah. There's no way she could have got in. It would seem that Timato was, in fact, not this innocent little girl. Man, I am one for one to start off. I hope that continues. Huh? How you figure that? You claim that Temato you saw had one of the sass from the Forbidden Chamber. But it would have been impossible for Miss Temba to get a hold of one. Can you elaborate, Mr. Justice? The mayor swallowed this key shortly after the murder. He wanted to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber. <sighs> What's this? This key was deep in the mayor's stomach when Miss Temma discovered the crime scene. So you see, it would have been impossible for her to get into the Forbidden Chamber. In short, the Temma Tower is seen holding that staff. Could not have been Jixi Temma. Yarga! What? But, but, uh, well then who does the defense believe was a person in Temma Tower? Our Temma Tower, our Temma Tower in is nothing other than I didn't even get a chance to finish. So rude. Such activations, back evidence. What does I even say? Uh, is none other than Mayor Tema's aid. Okay. Aside from his ghastly appearance, can you prove he is a yokai that we seek? Yes, in fact, I can. Hmm, very well. Let's see where the defense is going with this. Mr. Justice, please show us proof to the true identity of the Temma Tower impersonator. We found this hand cream in the Forbidden Chamber. And we know that whoever was Tematara took one of the staves out of there, in short. I believe whoever this hand cream belongs to is the Yokai impersonator we're looking for. Hmm. But Mr. Justice, how do you propose to identify the hand cream's owner? I am glad you asked, Your Honor. The defense requests a fingerprint analysis on this piece of evidence. It might tell us who it belongs to. Interesting. Do you expect to find the Yokai's prints there? Very well, I hereby call a short recess while we wait for the fingerprint results. No need for that, your palmness. We have the prints of everyone at the manor that day. You call, Prosecutor Blackwell! Oh, dear lord, could anyone be more whipped? Fulbright, analyze this for prints you have. Three minutes. Your wish is my command! Well, very well then, I guess we'll just wait right here. Hmm. It would seem the fingerprint analysis is complete. And what do the results show? What in the world? The Florent LaBelle's prints, aren't they? This. This is absurd. Um, Prosecutor a black quill? I'm not going to like this, am I? They don't tell me. The Tim Mateo's prints. Fingerprint analysis has revealed that the prints belong to... Yeah? Phineas Felch. Objection! That's... Wait, what? What? Then Mr. LaBelle wasn't the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber. Objection! Why, you tricksy little tanuki. Explain yourself now. Oh, sure, then that prints are mine. I mean, I did pill for the hand cream from Mr. LaBelle after all. 
so you're the one who went to the forbidden chamber. Ah, so, so what if I did? I mean, you, you got a problem with it? Yikes! You fool of a tanuki. Order, order, order. I suggest that you can't explain what this could mean. Well, excellent question. Um, the fact that Mr. Filch was in the Forbidden Chamber. Wait a second. Does this mean that Tematara holding that staff was Phineas Filch? Yikes! Another can out of the bag! But Mr. Filch is Tematara? I don't understand. Does this mean Mr. Fulch is a real killer? Well, the witness will explain himself this instant. I beg your pardon, you out of shit, but I was just doing what the alderman told me. He wanted me to be Tim Tower in the village exorcism me tool. Oh, you mean that event in the Night Tales Vale Festival? So that was you inside the Tim Tower costume? Yep, now to the event I went to watch the pro wrestling program. But it bored me to tears on account of the wrestlers being complete jobbers. So he didn't actually watch the entire wrestling match. I guess Joe Henry wasn't there that day. Well that's when I looked at the Tim Matara costume and I got a great idea. Nobody can tell it's me while I'm wearing it. And cause of them superstitions, no matter what I do, the villagers won't say a word. In other words, use the superstitions to effectively render yourself invisible. Why did you want to enter the Forbidden Chamber in the first place? Well, because of the treasure there. Thought that was my big chance to sack in on a nabbit. Treasure? <laughs> only that if it's the greatest escape bitch quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it, said there's amazing treasure in there. He went in there not knowing his grandfather had already puffled it. I guess that's one tale that didn't get passed down from grandpappy to grandson. Wait, how exactly did you get into the Forbidden Chamber? There was a meeting in the Fox Chamber that day. Plus, the mayor swallowed the only key that could open the Forbidden Chamber's door. You couldn't have possibly gotten in. Well, I could through the air vent in the foyer. The van slapped to the ultimate picture. I went on in and made a nice little hole. I just see the vent now. Use that to get into the air ducts that lead to the forbidden chamber I did. But is that possible? I mean... I, it's... So this is a foyer now. There is no vent shown in this picture. But the vent showing here. But then again, that vent in the forbidden chamber has to go somewhere. I mean, I, I guess it's possible? You what? But, but how is that even possible? Wait a sec. Remember that air vent in the forbidden chamber? So Mr. Filch found a way to get into that air duct. And that's how we got from the foyer vent to the forbidden chamber vent. Hmm, so a uh, timid toe is nothing more than a cat burglar, or rather a tanuki burglar. And we're back to being without anyone to charge for the other man's murder. Looks like our so-called yokai is nothing more than one big tabla maker. Tell me, Mr. Filch, what did you do after fleeing to the foyer? Well, I got out of that costume right quick, which has caused trouble at that point. And where is that costume now? Ah, heck if I know. And it ain't my fault if I ain't never find it. The police searched every nook and cranny. No yokai costume was left in that manor. What if it was tossed outside the mirror? Ah. What the cliff? No way! 
But maybe, just maybe. Well, the fans seem to have hit upon an idea. Must have hurt. Probably doesn't happen to him very well. Well, go on, Mr. Justice. Okay, uh, here's what I think. Mr. Filch, did you get rid of the custom here? Out the window? Take that! Did you toss it out the window? Because that would certainly explain why it didn't turn up inside the manor. Hey, you think I tossed it out the window? That costume cost me a pretty penny. So why would I go and do something like that? I can think of a few reasons. Any particulars, Pello? Well, assuming the costume really was tossed out from the window, then the next question would be, what happened to it after that? And if I'm right, I may have just the thing to prove what happened to the costume. Phineas Filch, I have just the evidence for you. You do? This evidence proves you got rid of your Tematara costume from the window. So is it the newspaper you just showed? Take that! Ah, that's, um... Tematara flying through the sky? And just how does that prove Mr. Filch threw the costume out the window? It's quite simple. Dude, that's not Tematara in this photo. It's a costume Mr. Filch threw out. Ah, that's crazy tell. You ain't serious, are you? There's a steep cliff right outside the foyer window, meaning the manor is pretty high up. That costume flew through the air after it was tossed out. That's when the photo was taken. Oh, okay. I can... I can see that. In other words, the photo of Tematara really was a flight of fancy, so we should be able to find the costume in the woods there, right? What? Yikes! Oh my, so there really never was a yokai. Ah, I can't keep any of them cats bagged. Can I still file a claim for the lost costume? This more than proves the defense's position. Jixi Tema had nothing to do with staging the yokai sighting. Care to raise any objections, prosecutor Black Quill? Hmm. None whatsoever. I'll deal with that tricksy Tanuki after I dealt with this case. Yikes! We we did it. Good going. Now all we have to do is make Flint the Bell take the stand. Objection! Sheathing this sword a bit early, are we not? Huh? Nothing has been proven beyond a doubt. Take this tricksy little tanuki, for instance. How do you suppose he was able to exit the forbidden chamber? Uh, probably the same way he got in? Through the chamber's airman, yeah. And what are the feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime? It would suggest that the tanuki exit through the chamber door, not the air vent. Objection! But the forbidden chamber doesn't open from the inside. So what you're saying makes no sense. Right? Unless someone opened it while he was in there. Hmm. Someone on the outside opened the door for you. Isn't that right? That's exactly what I just said. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Blackjack. <laughs> the door suddenly sprung right open. Hold it. Sprung right open. Who was on the other side? I didn't get any good look on account of the sudden glare. Uh, like how um, the reflection from the head blinds fellow moviegoers emerging from the dark. <laughs> really, Judge? Well, that's when I snatched the staff and made my daring escape. Well, then that little maid girl spotted me as I hightailed it down the hall. That means the forbidden chamber wasn't opened until after the crime was discovered. But wait. We still don't know who opened it. Maybe there really was a third person in the fox chamber. Objection! Well, you little tanuki. When the forbidden chamber opened, did you see the accused passed out there? Nope! Only there was the uh, alderman, he was dead as a doornail. Huh. If the accused it wasn't there, what do you suppose he was up to? Uh oh. 
I don't like where this is going. Uh, to tell me. Plainly, the only one who could have opened the forbidden chamber was the accused, Damien Tenma. Erg! Hold it! Wait a second. There has to be somebody else besides Mr. Tenma there. Really? And who might that be? Oh, well, that would be. Objection! It seems our price of the last has forgotten the most important thing. Evidence. I didn't forget. I was just testing your attention to details. Miss Sykes, you can't prove your point without proof of some sort. It's a proven fact. Sorry. Guess I put my foot in my mouth again. No, Athena, we're definitely onto something here. We are. Think about it. If Filch was stuck inside the Forbidden Chamber, one of the alibis we heard would no longer hold any water. The defense would like to call a new witness to the stand. Somebody who knew Mr. Filch was stuck in the Forbidden Chamber. And by virtue of knowing this, has an alibi that no longer holds up. Ah, not that insufferable. Yes, very well. The court will hear what Miss Justice say. Whose alibi no longer holds up? Uh, he said insufferable. I mean, it's got to. I mean, we we got to call Florent Labelle, right? Eventually. We could say Damien. It's either probably gonna be Damien or Floren. Shoot, what do I gotta lose? Take that! Why, that's a. Uh, that's the defense aides, Floren Labelle. Didn't he claim to be the four at the time of the crime? True, but in his alibi, he also claimed Mr. Filch was in the foyer, too. However, as we all know now, Mr. Filch was not there with Mr. Labelle at the time. In short, Mr. LaBelle's alibi has disappeared. Arg! Florian LaBelle's alibi was one big lie. Isn't that right, Mr. Filch? Well, I reckon there ain't no keeping that cat in the bag here, neither. It was all Mr. LaBelle's idea. He told me button his lip about me breaking into the forbidden chamber. And in return, he said he vouched for each other's alibi. Shame on you, Mr. Filch. Perjury is a serious crime, you know. Ah, shit. Mercy, your honorship, mercy! Aga! I also assert that the person who opened the forbidden chamber for Mr. Felt was none other than Follett Labelle. After all, his alibi has just been proven to be a complete fabrication. And good job, Taka. Such a good bird. I see. We will take a 20 minute recess. At which time, we'll see what Mr. LaBelle has to say for himself. Yes! We're finally going to drag that slippery snake onto the stand. Ah. In the meantime, the prosecution will question Mr. LaBelle about these new allegations. April 19th, 10.25 a.m. District Court Room? Defended lobby number three. We did it, Apollo. We haven't done anything yet. We finally dragged Mr. LaBelle into court. Yeah. Hey, why the long face? I can't help but feel I'm missing something important. Plus, prosecuted black holes bound to mount a counterattack. You really are a worry what, aren't you? It'll be fine. That mystery figure opened the forbidden chamber for Mr. Filch. Had to have been Flit LaBelle. I know, but that's not what's bugging me. I wish I could put my finger on it, though. At any rate, the big showdown with Mr. LaBelle is up next, so chin up, Apollo. What is it we're missing? April 19th, 11 a.m. District Court? Courtroom number four. Looks like the Joker, doesn't he? Like in that back picture with the purple coat and the green hair. Court is back in session. The next witness is. He so looks like the Joker in that picture. Like, absolutely 
positively looks like the Joker. Green hair, everything. I mean, you know what I mean, right? Yes, I'm acting on behalf of the Ma in this very important matter. Seems the witness is predisposed at the moment. <laughs> Surely you jest. I will hold you to your promise. Remember that. Oh, my deepest apologies. This is for the Nobel of Personal Art to Martinma. Or should I say, the accused? Ouch! If the poor mayor hasn't suffered enough. Well, what business do you have with the moi? I am a very busy man, so let's make this as brief as possible. <sighs> Your boundness. All right, mm, Mr. Filter's testimony has revealed the plot uh, hole in your alibi. And for this reason, uh, you are suspected of having some sort of connection with the case at hand. <laughs> to think I'd be associated with this entirely levied apart. Well, I'm not, so may I go now? I have barely imported my tires to attend to. Objection! I don't think so, Mr. LaBelle. Do you realize what a serious crime you've committed? Witness, you are being accused of perjury. This is your chance to clear the air. Fine, the truth is, I fight my alibi for a very good reason. The mayor was obviously the killer, so I created a fake alibi to confuse the matter. You see, as his personal aid, I felt a hard to protect him. Sorry. <laughs> you think this is funny? Without your alibi, you're a suspect too. What were you really doing at the time of the crime? <laughs> You peas, aunt. How dare you accuse moi of... What? Stop stalling and tell the court what you were really doing at the time of the crime. Silence. Huh? Huh? Mm. Enough jabbering. Swords have been drawn. The time for talk is past. Swords? What swords? This is a duel to the death. The fate of the accused rests in our hands. Be gone, ye of a cowardly heart! The battlefield hath no place for ye! Wait, did he just break his chains again? I thought we, like, reinforced those chains. Again? And I have no idea how he pronounced again, again. That was weird. Spare me, please! Really need to get some better shields. <laughs> so much for studio shackles, exactly. Ah! Those chains hindered my vow that heads would roll this day. Excuse me, to head on in a quarter, hold the meaning. <laughs> Will the witness please deliver the accused death now? You know of what I speak. <laughs> Most certainly. His ghost is already cooked. Time to stick a fork in him. Whatever he has to say can't be good. As I told the prosecutor Black Quill during the recess, I burst right over to the fox chamber when I heard the Jinxie scream. What? Well then, Jumbo, please. I saw Mertenma opening the forbidden Jumbo doors. But, 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 there you have it. The mystery man who opened the chamber door as witnessed by one Phineas felt. It was the accused. There was never any third party. 
Oh, that's not all. I heard something quite startling there at the scene of the crime. Startling sounds bad. He's lying through his teeth. The ma was very conscious. Murder this. Forgive me, Jitsei. I killed the other man. How would you know that? That's right. The man actually confessed to the murder right then and there. Ah, oh, that's not good. That's not good. He confessed? Well, he probably thought he killed him. Because he hit him over the head. No, he didn't hit him over the head. He got hit over the head. Ugh. Ooh, the one in the court. This is quite conclusive testimony, if it stands. Just so, and quite astonishing, I might add. I only learned of this fact during the recess. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that was. That was weird. I just love surprises, don't you? Got like someone caught my throat when I was laughing and saw like I was dying there. That's why I say the best for last. Consider it a gift for more to you. No way. I don't believe Miss LaBelle heard the mayor confess. But, uh, but is this really true? Did Mayor Timmer really confess? It is indeed. During that last recess, I confirmed it with the mayor's daughter. It would seem Mayor Tenma actually did confess. Hmm, well that testimony is quite favorable to the prosecution. This is the bell. Yes, I called earlier about the party reservations. Well, that's right, and I'll be calling more little shindig Matt Hammer's conviction gala. A splendid time is guaranteed for all. Oh, but the ma and his defense. <laughs> well, it seems our witness is a very busy man. Let's get right to his testimony. Mr. LaBelle, please tell us what you saw when you came upon the scene of the crime. Witness testimony, what LaBelle saw. I was in the hallway, hiding in the chateaus. That's when I heard the confession. Upon learning of her father's crime, little Jixie fled without ever noticing me. Immediately after that, the ma came to, stood up, and opened the forbidden chamber. As a man in terror, the demon emerged from his prison. In shock, I fled down the hallway to my right, to the van with the phone at the end. I must say, this is a shocking revelation. Shocking, I tell you. It's quite unexpected. To think that if any actually confessed then and there to his crime, perhaps the guilt was... Perhaps the guilt was too much to bear, so he confided in his daughter. You do realize that you should not have withheld such crucial testimony from the court! <laughs> Once again, sorry! It's just, I fear being accused if I mention coming upon that most unpleasant scene. Ark! Why did the mayor's confession have to be brought up by this guy? We better do something before the judge declares the mayor guilty. Hmm. As a death row inmate once told me in years gone by, there is a time to fight, and a time to yield, a time to live, and a time to die. Art! He's laying it on real thick now with those biblical verses. Actually, I'm not really sure that's how the Bible put it, but anyway. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Alright, let's go, Mr. Clown Prince. What LaBelle saw. 
I was in the hallway, hiding in the shadows. That's when I heard the confession. You claim that the mayor confessed to his daughter. Are you sure about that? Peasant, you wouldn't dare ask such a question if you totally understood. True beauty is never wrong. It's not? No, beauty is caught deep in the day and I. And that means I'm programmed to always be right, even when I'm wrong. I'm not following. These exquisite eyes like flowers of bloom. Those eyes that shine like pears. This paw like the finest silk. Nothing could pull up the truth that they hold. Um, right. Hmm, the witness will hurry up and explain the truth of his. Specifically, what did Jake's Tema do upon hearing the confession? Upon learning of her father's crime, little Jixi fled without ever noticing moi. How did Miss Tema appear to you? Oh, the poor little thing seemed positively heartbroken. Oh, terry eyed and but not. I couldn't help but shed a few tears myself after seeing her like that. He actually sympathized with Jixi? Seems like an overly human emotion for him. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah, because he's the only real monster we've seen so far, and looks any character. The next thing I did was to check my face in the mirror. Checked your face? Why? <sighs> to behold the beauty that is moi, Sanis. Why else? Apollo, I'm starting this off faith any minute. <laughs> I know the feeling, but hang in there. At least keep faith in our client. Well, let's give this movie, shall we? So what happened next? Immediately after that, the Ma came to, stood up, and opened the Forbidden Chamber. He opened the Forbidden Chamber? But why would he do that? Who knows? Maybe he wanted to free the demon the Timotel. Objection! This courtroom is no place for fairy tales. Remember, you are under your oath. Hello, the bell speaking. Yes, I will certainly explore the matter. Tutors. Now, where will be again? You are going to tell us the reason, real reason why the mayor opened the Forbidden Chamber. Oh yes, of course. Hello, this is the bell. <laughs> Good one, Sia. You're an absolute fayette. Okay, bye. You were saying... Oh god, never mind. This is a waste of time. Just going to tell more lies. The witness will focus on his testimony, not his phone calls. Now tell the court what you did after you saw the mail from the forbidden chamber. Well, after that, as I ran and Tava, the demon emerged from his prison. Oh, what was Mr. Filch like at the time? He was shouting, I can't see, I can't see, it's a case, so take me down. <laughs> then he took off running like a mud man. Hmm, he must have been blinded by the sudden light flooding in. Vong. What? He set eyes upon moi. And thus was absolutely blinded by my radiant beauty. Um. Uh, so it was a curse of Fleur and the Bell rather than Tim Mataro. 
Yes, I'm afraid such pute can be a curse. It's almost criminal. Hmm, the only thing criminal here is your clear ceaseless jabbering. Now, get on with your testimony. Oh, forgive me, your darkness. Let's see, oh yes, I fled for the life of Tamataro and... In short, I fled down the hallway to my right, to the one with the phone at the end. So, after you fled into the hallway with the phone at the end, Tamataro ran off to the foyer. Precisely. Miss any inconsistencies, Apollo? Well, Jixi also saw Tamatara, right? She did. She said she said they passed each other down the hall and after she made a call to the police. Well, if LaBelle had fled down the hall where the phone is, Jixi would have seen him when she was returning from making her call. Oh, right. And if she saw him, she would have definitely asked her for help. Right, it just doesn't make any sense. Time to review the evidence. If we don't find some way to poke a hole in his testimony, Mayor Tema is as good as guilty. This is bad. It's very bad. We need to find an inconsistency, a mistake, some kind of conflict. It's all over if we can't find a flaw in the prosecution's case. Okay, so... I fly down the hallway to my right to the one with the phone at the end. So to the right with the phone at the end. After leaving the scene and calling the police, they passed each other at a bend the hall as they made for the foyer. It's carrying a sap like end much. She couldn't call for help because there was no one else in the hall. Objection! Perfect. That seemed easy. Fluent the bell. You're lying about having witnessed these events in the hallway. <laughs> but on earth do you mean? Yes, can you feel the rest of us in, Mr. Justice? If Mr. LaBelle had really fled down into the hall with the phone in it, he would have crossed paths with Miss Tema. What's this? After she discovered the crime scene, she immediately went to call the police. Then, after making her call, she went back to the main hallway, whereupon she encountered the demon, Yokai, or whatever you want to call it. As for me, I call it Phineas Filch in a Tematara costume. The encounter happened right here where the hallways meet. As for Miss LaBelle, if he had fled there, feigning escape from the Okai imposter. Why, uh, why yes, the two would have crossed paths. Right, except Miss Temma told us that there was no one else in the hallway. In short, Miss Temma did not see you in the hall because you were never really there. Argamize, my beautiful eyes! Ha! Not such a fabulous set now, is it? But Mr. Justice, witness also say that you heard the mayor confess. He was lying about hearing the confession from the hall. Well then, where was he when he heard it? Inside the fox chamber. Where else? Hmm, but isn't that within the very crime scene? It is, Your Honor. And that means he's not really a witness. Rather, he's the third party I've been alleging this entire time. What? You think was the killer? How dare you? Silence. Foolish fop. True man knows when he is beaten. A shield of lies comes to knock before a foe with the sword of truth bared. Uh, prosecutor Black Quill, what are you? I thought Vave on the same side. You are mistaken. There are no sights here, save for my cold, steely eye of judgment. You are alone upon this battlefield, with that that you lies its sickly sweet perfume. Whoa, what just happened? Black Quill's really tearing into him. Maybe he's actually a good guy who does believe in justice, but then again, he murdered someone, so yeah, forget that. He's got a cool bird, though. 
You heard the mayor's confession from the inside, did you not, you divvy dandy? For the sole location from which you could have seen and heard the mayor and the tanuki. Without either of them noticing you were right there in the fox chamber. Oh my! So that's how it's going to be? Fine, I'll come clean then. Seriously? You admit to being there in the fox chamber? I do. I did enter that room after the murder. But I was afraid of being falsely accused, so I lied about it. I feel terrible about lying like that. But it's a verbal cologne I use to protect myself. Oh, come on, give me a break. You better explain yourself, Mr. LaBelle. Yes, of course. I was just about to get to that. The witness is skating on thin ice. I'll remind you that the perjury is a very serious crime. Now, let's hear your testimony again, this time without your perfume of lies. All right, round two, witness testimony in the fox chamber. I did enter the fox chamber after the murder, but I didn't enter until after Jixie had heard the confession and left. I heard the mayor groan and hid behind the folded screen there. What I saw there up closer, it was absolutely horrifying. So you see, I was there, but merely watching from behind the screen. Hmm, from behind the screen? Well, yes, I believe you wouldn't be spotted if you were there. Just so, you could see everything without being spotted by the victim or the Tanuki Filch. Suffice to say, he was a mere witness to the events rather than an actual third party. Ah, <sighs> this guy is as slippery as an eel. Apollo, you think he's telling the truth? Well, he was in the fox chamber, so at least that must be true. The events may cross-examine our slightly voyeuristic witness. <laughs> cross-examination. In the fox chamber. I did enter the fox chamber after the murder. Hold it. Why in the world would you enter that grisly crime scene? Why? Because I was very sick. May it and may suit it. Uh, it what? It was designed personally by Ma. I was right, my work of art might get blood on it. This man clearly has his priorities in order. Okay, let's get this over with, shall we? Now, where was I? Oh yes, I entered the fox chamber almost without the game. But I didn't enter up until after Jixie had heard the confession and left. Why did you enter right away? And ruin my designer shoes? Your shoes? I mean, shoes? Even now, just thinking about getting blood on my fabulous footwear. It sends chills down my spleen. That's why I hesitated. Objection! That's terrible. A man was dying and another injured, and you're worried about your shoes? Silence! Need I remind you, this is a court of law. We are not teaching morality here. We have schools of etiquette and the like for such per trivial pursuits. Ka! Now, you listen to me, you deceptive dandy. Get to the point and be quick about it. Oh, yes, well, I was there in the fox chamber, but... I heard the macaron and hid behind the folding screen. Uh, 
Oops, I got, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back, go back. Hold it. Wait a second. Why did you hide yourself? Oh my, so you do understand. I do? By hiding, I was concealing more fabulous beauty, which for the sake of the universe is something I would never ever do. That's what you were thinking, right? I've seen a black hole of ego centricity forming around the witness hand. We can deliberate his, deliberate his mental process another time. Get on with the testimony now! Well, we cut in the murder scene. What I saw there up close, it was absolutely horrifying. Hold it. Could you describe the crime scene in a bit more detail? Hmm, and what exactly would you like details about? Well, what I'd like to ask about is... Ooh, the feathering tracks, right? What do you remember about the Okai feathers and tracks? They resulted when Tematara exited the Forbidden Chamber. He came out in quite a rush, scattering feathers this way and that. Did you immediately know it was Mr. Filch? I did, and that's why I suggested we cook up our alibis together. And how did those practice sessions go? They were nearly the death of me. But she has to be the worst student ever. He really doesn't think he's done anything wrong, does he? Well, Mr. Justice, you consider his statement to be of any importance? Is it important? I don't think that was important because we know the tracks will have afterwards. It's probably not particularly important. No, Your Honor. The witness may proceed. All right, then. I would just like to add that it was a terribly grisly scene, as I had described it. I'll come back to that. Let me go through this one first. So you see, I was there, but merely watching from behind the screen. Hold it. The mayor had been knocked out by a blow to the head. Could he really have opened the forbidden chamber in that state? Well, it did seem difficult. He was all losing something around as he opened it. It was such a heroic effort that I nearly started to cheer him on despite the myself. I think the mayor needed medical attention more than a cheerleader. You think it's something truth about being there in that room? Well, I believe he was there. The question is, when did he enter? You mean, did he enter after Jixi fled? Or was he there before the murder? If it's the latter, that would change everything. Right, if he was there before the murder, that would make him a suspect. But how do we go about proving that? Well, I guess we ask him about what happened there. Hold on. If it was there before the murder, that would make him a suspect. Anyway, let's press him and see what kind of info we can extract from him. Let's cross our fingers that he says or reveals something incriminate. Yeah, it's that. I'm not sure which one of these. I hate it when they give you an option of three things. Could you please describe the forbidden chamber at the time? It was so tight until the ma opened it. He's really trying to stress that it was a mayor who opened the forbidden chamber. Just that big liar. He opened it himself. Whoa, it looks like he could if looks could kill, the bell would be toast. Well, Mr. Justice, you can see his statement to be of importance. I don't know. Because uh, the the problem is that The problem is Let me try the last one. Because we haven't talked about the murder weapon at all, right? Like, where did this spear come from, anyway? Could you describe the state of the weapons that have been used at the scene? 
The spear had been thrust all the way through Adam and Cubay. Then there was a statue the other men used, the bludgeon Ma Tinma. That incredibly insane symbol had fallen to the floor. All oh, right, the statue. But why would he find it inspiring? Oh, because of the he saw, he saw what the statue actually looked like. He knows what it actually looked like, which means he was in there before the before he got before the alderman cocked the guy over the head, or before the mayor cocked the alderman. What exactly did he find the statue inspiring? <laughs> Well, when I saw that statue, I felt as if the murder had been realized. It was like a celebration of union between town and village, an inspiring symbol of good will. I got you, you son of a... A broken statue next to a bloody corpse? Real inspiring. Yes, absolutely add this to the evidence. I believe that to be extremely important. I regret said add it to the testimony. A statue had fallen to the floor. It was a token, a good feel, celebrating resistible major. A token of goodwill? Are you referring to the Fox and Demon statue? Yes, the statue the alderman allegedly used to strike back at Mertenma. The mayor toppled down municipal goodwill, only to be clobbered by its symbol. It's quite ironic, don't you think? And that's when that symbol of goodwill was transformed into symbol of conflict. Okay, so I feel less confident based on this wording, because he never mentioned the cup. Objection! But now I feel confident because the music stopped. Your lies have finally betrayed you, Mr. LaBelle. What possibly could you mean? I got you! I got you! I got you! Whew. That feels good. It, it feels good. You said this statue was like a celebration of union between the town and the village. Is it that correct? It is indeed, but what of it? The Tiokai are joining Hans in Goodwill. As if they were celebrating Municipal Major. Hmm. Huh? Something the matter. So, how do you really know what this that the statue was meant to be a symbol of goodwill again? What? Eh? Just as don't know. Explain yourself and make it quick. This statue was meant to symbolize goodwill in its original form, but that was a secret. A secret? Whatever do you mean? What, what I mean is that when that it broke when someone used it to strike my Tama on the head. What's left clearly makes it look like the two Kai are battling it out. Eww. The statue's secret in true form were lost inside that locker room. For Miss Tema is the only living soul who should know what it once looked like. So, Mr. LaBelle, where could you have possibly seen this statue in its original form? Uh, wait, what do you mean, va? The only possible answer is this. You saw the statue in its original form. Right there in the room where the alderman was murdered before it was broken. How dare you? Um, Mr. Justice, are you accusing the witness of some sort of crime? Yes, yes I am. Pulling the bell. I accuse you of the murder of Alderman Rex QB. Order, order, order. Mr. LaBelle, you've been accused of murder. You have anything to say in your defense? Oh, how could you possibly just fall and find me the beauty? Way to go, Apollo. This is the conclusive evidence we needed. Magnifico. We got you now. We know you killed Alderman. Now admit it. All right, my friends. Well, we're going to go ahead and stop here. 
But wanna roll, wanna roll, wanna roll! We, we know what we're doing. But there's still that naggy thing that Apollo said at the beginning of, you know, the, the, the middle when we went on recess. That there's something important that we're forgetting. What is the thing that we're forgetting? I don't know. Oh, so I have a feeling this case is not over yet. If, it, if I felt like we're right at the end, I'd probably stop here. But no, 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 no. He's still going to fight tooth the nail against us. So let's let's get ready for that fight. Until next time, my dear friends. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. So long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.